Good evening. This is CTV News for Wednesday, June 29th. I'm Karen Adams. And I'm Denise Douglas. So glad you could join us this evening. The former teacher's aide who is at the center of a child sex abuse scandal has been indicted. Byron Scott has the latest in this story. The indictment is 116 pages long and includes 270 counts that could put Deontay Carraway behind bars for the rest of his life. 40 counts of first degree sex offense. There are 41 counts of second degree sex offense. 44 counts of third degree sex offense. 270 counts in all. 270 individual acts of sexual abuse of 23 children, three of whom have yet to be identified by investigators. This is probably the largest indictment. Uh, we were hoping to, to capture what occurred and the gravity of it. It just, I think, speaks to uh, just how horrible this case was and is. Uh, but it is the largest indictment that we've handled since I've been here. 22-year-old Deontay Carraway was arrested in February of this year. The victims ranged between 9 and 13 years old. Investigators say Carraway video recorded the children performing sex acts on each other and on him. The incidents happened at Judd Sylvania Woods Elementary School, where Carraway worked and later volunteered. Investigators say he made other recordings at Glen Arden Municipal Center, the Teresa Banks Memorial Aquatic Center, and and at private homes. Also, Brooks said they found scores of child porn images recorded on two cell phones, one orange, the other white. The, the first degree sex offense cases carry life sentences and there are at least 40 of those. And so Mr. Carraway is facing multiple life sentences uh, if he is found guilty of these offenses. The incidents may have gone unnoticed even longer were it not for the uncle of a nine-year-old student who was checking his nephew's cell phone and saw a nude photo of his nephew. He contacted police. It is also our hope to do whatever we can to support the children and the families who have been impacted just in unimaginable ways. The trial date has yet to be set, but when it does begin, also Brooks says she hopes to minimize the impact on the victims by not requiring them to testify. What we know is that we're able to use, in many cases, the devices, the video devices uh, that will depict, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Carraway engaged in sex acts with these children. Also, Brooks says there is another investigation going on, one involving the school district, and they're looking into who may have known what and when. At the courthouse, Byron Scott, CTV News. Byron also tells us that Caraway is facing federal charges related to the incidents. Meanwhile, some residents who live near Judge Sylvania Woods Elementary School say they hope Deontay Caraway never sees the light of day again. CTV spoke with Glen Arden residents following today's indictment. They say they now have extra cautious feelings when it comes with their kids and school. We have to, as parents and, you know, uh, protectors of the young, we have to uh, do more to ensure the uh, education of our young and, you know, the welfare of them. So I think the school system is still pretty uh, secure and safe. Somebody knew about it. Somebody knew about it in that school. There's no way I heard about it and then it was filtered toward the church or Glen Arden. No, nah, nobody gets away with nothing like that. Somebody knew something. Yeah, I thought that was really sad about what happened. Uh, it, it makes no sense. But um, I believe that that was, in my, well, in my personal opinion, I believe that that was just an um, isolated incident. And I, I feel that, I mean, there, there, there probably wouldn't be any future problems. Caraway was also a member of several community organizations. Nationwide, firearm safety advocates push for common sense gun legislation, including in the city of Baltimore. On this day of action outside the Cathedral of the Incarnation, congressmen stand with gun violence survivors, city, faith, and community leaders. They're calling for the Republican leadership in Congress to push through gun legislation to make our community safer. As we mourn the murders of those in the Orlando mass shooting, as well as those who were injured, I'd like to remind everyone that 57% of mass shootings, those that include four or more deaths, involve domestic violence. We are speaking up for what science shows us to be true, that gun violence is a disease, that it is a public health crisis, that it is an epidemic. I have a word for Speaker Ryan. 85% of Americans have said and made it very clear that those who are suspected terrorists should not have guns. Duh. 
our message is very simple. There will be no more business as usual in the House of Representatives until we have an opportunity to take action on this issue. This push for sensible gun legislation follows last week's sit-in on the House floor when Democrats called on Speaker Paul Ryan to hold a vote on safety bills. Also, gun safety advocates say they want to keep the pressure on those key lawmakers who are holding the measures up. A Silver Spring man pleads guilty to throwing a Molotov cocktail at an Upper Marlboro house. The incident happened a year and a half ago. 35-year-old Travis Body filled beer bottles with gasoline, drove to Upper Marlboro, and then tossed the bottles at the home, igniting a small fire outside. No one was injured. Body was arrested a short distance from the scene. He could face up to 20 years behind bars when he is sentenced in October. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Denise Douglas. And I'm Karen Adams.